All right, guys, we need to have a conversation. We need to have a conversation about these college quarterbacks, and we need to have a conversation about how they relate to the current Seattle Seahawks. So, all right, first of all, let, let, let's talk about the list here real quick because we've had a big shakeup here. I, I kind of said that I didn't think there were going to be any big shakeups left because we were already so deep in the season, but uh, Will Levis's watch is over. And that's not me saying I don't like him. I like him a lot. I think he's going to be good. I'm very high on Will Levis. But I cannot leave him in the number one spot after the game he just had against Tennessee. Um, obviously not everything going on with Will Levis is his fault. The team really kind of split up last offseason. He lost three starting linemen and a top receiver. But that was a bad game. I, I said I was going to leave Levis in the top spot until he had a bad game. Well, he had a bad game. The numbers speak for themselves. He had like 90 yards and three interceptions. And beyond just uh, the, the numbers, um, I watched a good chunk of that game uh, there was one play in particular that really stuck in my craw. It was down around the goal line, first and goal. Uh, Levis play fakes, I believe. He rolls out. He and Nothing's there. It's all covered up. There's nothing he can do. Every other quarterback in the world pretty much just throws it away and goes back to a second and goal. Will Levis cuts back and tries to Cam Newton his way through the defensive line into the end zone. Takes a monster hit. I think he gets hurt on the play. Uh, yeah. Okay, there, there's no need for that. And I know Will Levis is a tough guy. He stayed in the game. He, he, he didn't, I don't believe he missed any plays because of that, but I do believe he got hurt. And there's just no need for that kind of stuff. There's no need to say, oh, first and goal, it's early in the game. This is a huge game for my team. I'm going to throw myself at 1,000 pounds of defensive linemen trying to get into this end zone when we're going to have another two cracks at it minimum after this play anyway. So that bugged me. That screams to me of a guy who's not going to last that long in the NFL because he's not going to be able to stay upright. So I moved him down to number three. I still like him a lot. The things that I see with him are still there regardless of one bad game. But it, I just have to say that C.J. Stroud is now the number one. And I say that knowing that C.J. Stroud is going to probably go number one overall or at least top three. But... He is head and shoulders above every other quarterback in this class right now, I believe. So that, that I think, has been pretty well decided. Levis bumps down to three, so Stroud and Levis uh, switched places. Also bumped up May from UNC to number 10 over Penix because May had a big game. And that's basically all the changes I actually made to the list. Everything else stayed fairly static. Um... But we, we need to have a broader conversation about these players. So, look, C.J. Stroud, I think he's really good. Tremendous accuracy, tremendous understanding about how to conduct an offense. Great player, great prospect. Not a historic prospect or anything like that, but very, very good. But you're probably looking at him going number one overall. I, I expect him to go, honestly, if he doesn't go number one, I would be shocked if he didn't go top two. Like top, like third is the lowest I can see him going. So with Denver winning last week against Jacksonville, they are probably staring at a pick. Uh, the pick that they're going to give to us probably going to be somewhere around that four to ten range. If I had to guess right now, four to ten. That's not going to be high enough. Hendon Hooker, look. I like him a lot, obviously. You, you, there's a lot of positive things you can say about him. But are you really excited about using a top 10 or even a first round pick on a guy who's going to be 25, 26 his rookie year? When, by the way, they're, 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 uh, he's playing well. He's a very good player. There's no doubt about it. But there have definitely been words written about how his offense is simplified. So that's a guy who's already going to be old and may not be completely ready for the NFL. May not be all there for NFL football. Will Levis, of course I still like him. But he's an older prospect as well. Is Will Levis somebody you want to hand the reins to immediately? Looking at some of the things that are eluding him a little bit in college, like pocket presence and general self-preservation? 
Like, uh, I, I would be okay with it. But as of right now, he is slipping down draft boards a little bit. And if the Seahawks end up with that top 10 pick, we may end up in a situation in April where using that top 10 pick would be considered a reach. And you don't necessarily want to do that. So it's not looking that sexy for the Seahawks to use that top pick on a quarterback. I've kind of alluded to this recently. This class has been a disappointment. Anthony Richardson, DJU, and Cam Ward are the next three guys on my list. I kind of feel like all of them are going to go back to college. That's why I put them in yellow. I think they're going to spend another year in the NCAA. You're not going to be able to draft any of them. And then you get down below those guys. I love KJ Jefferson, but he doesn't fit this offense at all. Will Rogers, decent. Bryce Young, okay. Devin, uh, I'm sorry, not uh, not Devin May. Uh, I can't remember his first name. Dennis May, eh. It's, it's not great. I, I was sitting here waiting for some other quarterback like Tyler Van Dyke or Devin Leary, who's now injured, by the way, not totally his fault, or Grayson McCall or uh, maybe even a Michael Penix, although he's honestly, he's probably doing about as good as you could ever hope for. I, I don't want to put that on Penix for not becoming a top 20 prospect. But I was waiting for somebody to rocket up the draft boards and be this year's Jay Cutler or Ryan Tannehill, somebody who was not really being talked about and then all of a sudden, over the course of their final year in college, just shoots up. Hasn't happened. At this point, I think that Van Dyke might go in the fourth round. A guy like Spencer Rattler, I don't even think he's going to get drafted at this point. Just all these guys that I was looking at thinking somebody's going to shoot up the draft boards and it's going to make this QB class look even stronger. By and large, it is not happening. The only guy it kind of happened with is Hendon Hooker. But other than that, the guys who are ultra desirable in this class were the guys that most people thought were ultra desirable in this class. And I'd say guys like Levis and to a certain extent, maybe Bryce Young. I know Bryce Young is playing really well, but he had that silly injury where he kind of exposes to me some of the problems that I think he's going to have in the NFL. It's not the great QB class we were expecting. Not only is it not good at the top, really, like, like, okay, Stroud's awesome, but C.J. Stroud is not some lock it up, throw away the key, surefire Hall of Famer. He's not an Andrew Luck or a Peyton Manning or a John Elway type prospect. I don't even really think he's a Joe Burrow type prospect. Um, He's more of a, maybe like a Jameis Winston, where, yeah, he's a really good prospect. You don't mind taking him number one overall, but you're not super excited for it. He's he's a quality number one prospect. It's fine, but it's not over the top. You're not super duper slam dunk home run, throw it in the box and forget about it excited about taking him number one overall and the depth just is not there the way we were hoping I mean maybe my favorite guy in a vacuum KJ Jefferson or relative to where you could get him in the draft my favorite guy KJ Jefferson um he doesn't fit this offense so it can't be him and that leaves you with a lot of guys who are probably going to be there late day two or day three Like, Will Rogers may be a day three pick. May might be a day three pick. Uh, Penix, day three pick, potentially, if he comes out. So, yeah, it's not a great class. So, that's the way things have broken right now. Uh, Right now, you look at what the Seahawks have with Geno Smith, and bottom line is, is any of this better than Geno Smith? I think C.J. Stroud would be. I would rather have C.J. Stroud on a rookie contract than Geno on some $120 million contract. But you're probably not going to have the chance to get Stroud. And I don't want to trade up to get him because it's going to be so expensive to do that. Is having Geno for the next three, four years better than having Hooker or Levis or somebody, you know, K.J. Jefferson, who I don't even think would be in the conversation because of his fit? Geno's probably better than all those guys. So... The combination of those two things, Geno playing really well and this QB class not being what was promised, plus the 2024 QB class looking good, 
where you're going to have Anthony Richardson, DJU, Cam Ward, maybe Penix, Caleb uh, Williams, and Quinn Ewers, and whoever else decides to join that club. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to, uh, I, I got to be honest here, I don't, I don't think our solution lays here anymore. I think what you might see is the team decides to use a day three pick on a quarterback, like a fourth round pick on Van Dyke, fourth round or fifth round pick on Michael Penix. Uh, if Grayson McCall is there in day three, maybe him. If Will Rogers or May or, you know, one of these guys is there in day three, maybe that's the play to be behind Gino. So, yeah, I got to say, this was probably the most hyped quarterback class that I can remember. Maybe, I don't know about 2020. 2020 was great with the top five, but then after that, it was a big drop-off. So, I felt like this one was going to be a little bit better. It's not. It's Right now, it's not. And there's still some time for things to change. Like, maybe a guy like uh, May is going to just suddenly blow up on the league and throw 30 touchdowns in the next four games. But right now, I don't I don't see anything that's that much better than Geno. Unless Denver loses out, you get the number one pick, then I'm like, okay, give me C.J. Stroud and we'll move on. Short of that, yeah, I think I'm just keeping Geno, building the defense, and thinking about quarterback in a future year. So yeah, um, that was kind of a broad conversation about the state of the quarterback class. It's it's unfortunately just the guys at the top, with the exception of Stroud, to me have let down a little bit, and all the potential sleepers have not really done that good for me except for Hooker. So it is what it is. Let me know what you guys think. I'm going to get out of here. Peace out. Go Hawks. Going to be on Twitch later tonight. Valhalla. See you guys soon.